You may have seen my vlog about Teotihuacan two weeks ago. Now I'm going to talk about Dutch Settlers. Also has David Tetschi in it. I'll briefly talk about the game, what I think about it. And stay tuned until the end. We have David Tetschi himself giving you tips and strategy, not only for Dutch Settlers, but also Teotihuacan coming up. Hope you're well. This is Stella from Impul University. Welcome back to my weekly tabletop diary. For those who haven't seen our videos yet, our main mission is to explain board game rules clearly on YouTube. On our channel, we do a lot of how to play, overview, playthrough, and vlog just like this one. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already done so. Questions of the week. If you are to meet board game designer, your favorite board game designer, what questions would you like to ask them? Please write in the comment sections below. I'd like to hear some ideas from you. We do have interview coming up, so we just like to get some ideas and obviously we'll share you the interview in my vlog. The game we play, Dice Settlers. We have the how to play, playthrough and overview video for Dice Settlers, so check that out if you like. I'd just like to share what I think about it. I feel like my first game, I'm just don't remember what action refers to what in the dice. Luckily, it comes with player cheat sheet on the player boards, so you can actually see exactly what your faces are and what icon means what. So this is really handy. Please do look at it. It also comes with this dice um, anatomy, so you can have a look what dice has got what icons on it. We have a deluxe version of the game, so you can see the player's tents. It's got different shapes, different colors. It's really cute. The Stonemaier Games components also is part of the Kickstarter Deluxe Edition. We have a few well-known names that were involved in making the games, such as David Tertie, the game designer himself, who also designed or co-designed a few games like Necrony, Cerebria, Tricarion, Teotihuacan, and so on. We have the Miko, the artist, really good artwork for this game. Um, I usually, when I see the Miko's work, I recognize right away that is his work. One of my favorite um, board game artwork is by the Miko. Um, he designed um, a do the artwork such as Robin Hood and the Merry Men, Rush to the Nobility, Kevin Tavern, Architects of the West Kingdoms, and so on. And the rule editor is Paul Grogan from Gaming Rules, who, of course, if you don't know, then you probably haven't watched video on YouTube about board games. He has got a really good channel of gaming rules, and he was also on our previous vlog talking about tips and strategy, how to explain board games. I like the elements of engine building where you research technology cards and make your actions a little bit more powerful for your next step. I like the elements of able to modify your dice roll. So I found that I always seems to roll really bad dice roll. Like I swear, that's usually happened on most of my games. So in this one, you can to a certain degree modify your dice roll to something that you actually wanting and also you don't actually have to stick to one strategy if you draw a certain icons you can um, apparently change your strategy to suit whatever it is that you roll to maximize your actions so the main board is very different in every game because you use your explore actions to reveal each tiles so every game so will be different tiles in the middle, which is great. So there are a few ways in this game to make your actions a bit more powerful. Of course, by refilling the tiles, exploring, and you gain the benefit. One of them is by making your actions more. This is one of my favorite strategies, which um, gets you more dice to roll each turn and as well as doing the research quite early in the game if you could and therefore you can gain the benefit of, from these cards and make your subsequent actions more powerful and that's enough me talking about dice settlers now we have david terchi who will give you the tips and strategy first on dice settlers and then to tuakan coming up hi this is david Turti. i'm the designer of dice settlers and the solo designer of uh, Teotihuacan and I'm here to give you a few strategy pointers on how to play these games from board and dice. 
Uh, I'll, I'll start with Die Settlers. I probably can tell you more about that one. Uh, the trick with Die Settlers is that it's dice driven, obviously, because it's a dice bag builder game. And because of that, at the surface, it looks like that each round you get a set of random options. But the thing is, there are no bad options. There are a number of actions in the game, all of which help you move forward. Your job is to every round look, uh, decide which one, two or three actions would be your absolute best. The, the actions that you would really want to do if the dice just magically rolled whatever you wanted. And then in using your dice manipulation abilities, uh, the reroll powers, the setting powers, uh, try to coach the dice into something close to your ideal turn as possible. Don't try to do it the other way. If you just look at your dice and that looks completely different, don't give up. Try to figure out how to get close to your ideal turn as much as possible. There are plenty of dice manipulation abilities. There are no inherently bad rolls. Trust yourself. Try to find the strategy. Uh, and don't just play on a tactical level. Don't just uh, uh, try to maximize each turn. Look at the technology offer. Uh, keep note of the tiles appearing throughout exploration and try to have a goal. Where are you going to get your big points from? Are you going to find and secure uh, seven and nine point tiles or are you going to get a four lamp tack and score 10 points at the end? Up to you. Just pick a strategy. Try to stick to it. Uh, choose your dice accordingly. The brown dice is very good if you want lots of resources. But if you need to trade very quickly, then you might need an orange or a green for the extra handshakes. Uh, if there are limited ways of increasing your dice quota, then definitely make sure to get them. If there are multiple, you know, prioritize. Uh, because if you don't, if you let yourself just be washed away by the rhythm of the game, then you'll have to pivot often and then you'll feel like you missed out on some things. So, in short, take control. Uh, make Bend the dice to your will and then eventually you won't need luck at all. Few thoughts about Teotihuacan. I'm not considered a world class player in that game, so don't believe everything I say. Uh, to me, the soul of the game is looking at the starting setup and trying to pick one or two strategies that promise to be the most juicy in that game. Uh, what do I mean? Uh, th there are a number of uh, technology ties in play each game, some of them make the pyramid building stronger, some of them uh, make uh, uh, discovery tile collection stronger, some of them make you move around easier, make the cocoa economy easier, uh, which in turn allows you to spend more time going up the temples. So figure out which, uh, which strategy is being boosted the most this game and then plan your ascensions. Do you need the cocoa from the ascension to pay for your workers or can you pick a more useful reward for ascending. Uh, if you can shoot up on multiple temple tiles, you can get the endgame objectives, which will also score you big points. Uh, are there enough masks at the beginning of the game to support a mask collection strategy, or should you just technically pick up the right discovery tile whenever and not really plan your game around them? Uh, uh, Pyramid is always very good for uh, resources to victory point ratio, so even if it's not the best strategy on the current setup, uh, definitely don't ignore it completely. And uh, also look out for the order of the, the boards, because remember when you ascend, you go back to the first board. So any board, any the boards that are on the first half of the uh, circle will be m more easily accessible, more often accessible towards the end of the game. I hope some of these trip, uh, tips will help you and you'll enjoy both Dice Settlers and Teotihuacan, uh, both in multiplayer or against the bot. Good luck and keep on playing. I have provided the link to this game in the description below if you're interested in getting it. If you have any questions, feedback, ideas for my next vlog, please write in the comment sections below. And finally, if you have been enjoying our content, please consider subscribing to our channel. This will help us monetizing our channel, bring us better equipment and better content. Until next week.